going on everybody Fedor here from 3d print SOS welcome back to the channel and in front of me I have two tiny little machines that I've actually really enjoyed using and I think are totally worth your attention and your money I think both of these the Trunksy Crux one and the King Rune KP 3s Pro uh, are both great machines and they do things a little bit differently I think that this Trunksy machine is really good stock the way it is I have no need to do anything to it and everything and has done everything that I've asked of it with flying colors and I really do enjoy using this machine. It's become a little bit of a workhorse and I think that that's what it's good at. It's good for just being this, exactly what it is. I, I also have to say that it has some of the smoothest action um, on any of the axes that I have on any machine. Uh, this embedded uh, rod inside of the extrusion uh, with these metal grooved wheels just it's just so, so, so smooth. Um, and as far as longevity goes, I know some people say they don't know how long it's going to last. I have this Gemini S right over here, also by Tronxy, that I've had for over two years now, and I've really enjoyed that machine as well. Actually, not over two years, just under two years. Uh, and it hasn't had a single issue with its embedded uh, rail system. But this machine can be modified as well, um, uh, just like the uh, King Rune here, but I don't think it can be modified as much. There's quite a bit of aftermarket for this machine. Uh, in front of me here, I have uh, some rails for the Y to convert this to a full linear system, a new um, uh, bed carriage that's a really, really nice thick aluminum, uh, and a PI uh, bed uh, spring sheet uh, for the Y, basically converting this machine to full rails, like I mentioned. I know that it can also run things like Clipper, uh, and just the way that the, this whole hot end is with the Titan extruder, the V6 style um, uh, hot end itself, all of this lends itself a little bit more and well to uh, aftermarket parts and just modifying it to however you want to use uh, this machine. Um, so that's it. I think if, if I think this is a machine for people that want to kind of expand on a little bit later um, or want to just customize and like to tinker, and I think this was this is for somebody that doesn't have much room but wants a really reliable machine that's really inexpensive uh, and will produce amazing uh, 3D prints for what it is. So for today's video, I'm just going to speed through installing these parts and I'm going to try to figure out a way to get this reverse Bowden tube uh, done a little bit better because in my personal opinion, this is the worst part of the whole thing it cheapens it I just don't like the way it is uh, on the trunk seat the way that the reverse Bowden tube is done with the two couplers is perfect it's literally how this type of thing should be done um, and I want to try to do a similar thing on this in some way shape or form so we'll see how we can do that throughout the video but yeah the goal is to just install these parts and see if it's worth uh, doing if it's worth picking up one of these and uh, these parts or is it similar to the trunk seat where it would have been better just left alone so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in to getting these mods installed. All right, see you in a second.
All right, so short and sweet. However, I've been using this machine for a little bit over a week now, uh, printing this matte PTG by California Filament, and it has been just an absolute joy to use. The only thing I can say that I, I'm, I want additionally is maybe for it to go just a little bit faster. And I think uh, what I can do is I do have a custom machine that I'm going to be taking apart for parts uh, just to retire. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, there is a Raspberry Pi in there that I can take out. So if you guys want to see this thing clipperized, let me know. Maybe we'll do it on a live video. I've never done a clipper before on any machine. I think it's obviously time for me to get to it just so that I can compare everything, you know, that whole experience with other things. Uh, it's probably important for me to get to. So I know that a lot of people are not only interested, but a lot of people have already clipperized these things. Uh, just when I was researching more about this machine, uh, especially when I was doing these rails, uh, King Rune has their own video on how to install all those that's why I just sped through uh, our installation without going into too much detail they already have a great video and I noticed they have clipper videos as well they have an entire section on their website dedicated on how to install clipper on various uh, ver in various ways and they make it seem fairly easy so I think I want to tackle that at some point now if there's any other modifications you guys think I should be doing to this machine or you guys have done and you're enjoying please let me know down in the comments below I would love to know and I'm just genuinely interested in this machine. Don't get me wrong, I really like the Tronxy Crux 1. I think it's great for what it is, but I like this one just a hair more because it has that upgrade path that the Tronxy doesn't. And like I said, I'm not going to be touching that thing. It has been a workhorse. It prints really well the way it is, but there's just something about this. Maybe it's the fact that I like modifying things a little bit or I'm constantly tinkering with something. This just takes it over the edge for me. Now, I'm still not 100% fully happy with some of the things on here. Like for example, I did have to drill out uh, the filament sensor to get this tube all the way in. However, now it gets held in by this metal piece and now it goes into the sensor. So when you're putting filament up there, it doesn't just come out of there and you have to constantly fiddle with the tube. It at least stays here the way it is. So that's definitely a plus. I do think that there, there's gotta be some different way to mount this, maybe somewhere on the hot end itself or just in a different location, just so that it's not so finicky because I just don't like the placement. I also don't like that the filament spool, even though these are nice. I don't like the, the fact that it can just be anywhere. I kind of wish it had its own designated spot. So we'll deal with that when we get to it. Uh, one of the other things that I did was the limit switch. So the limit switch has a bolt that it touches. And what I did was I found a little flat top uh, bolt and I just put it in here with a nut. So essentially once I found the Z height when, that, when uh, the sensor clicks exactly the height I wanted, I just went ahead and tightened that nut. And now that thing is solid, it doesn't move and it's not just gonna wiggle itself free Free, which both uh, the stock and the included uh, knobs that came with the kit uh, also had just a little bit of play in it. And for something that's supposed to be a Z limit switch for leveling, just something about that wiggling I didn't like. So this is definitely a solution for that. As you guys saw in the video uh, or maybe noticed, I definitely went ahead and uh, got some silicone spacers instead of the springs so now this isn't sitting on springs it's literally sitting on four silicone pads now you can still use the wheels to, for leveling and some micro adjustments uh, but it should stay leveled for a lot longer now uh, and uh, have a little bit less ringing and things like that so it should actually lend itself a little bit better to going a little bit faster now uh, on top of that while i had the bed off i put some insulation on the bottom there and uh, sealed the edges with some cap cap tom tap con with some tape uh, that's good with heat. Uh, and uh, and now that has insulation just like the Tronxy machine uh, came stock. I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't have that their stock. Uh, but, you know, it is a budget machine, so it is what it is. I think the only thing holding it back is maybe some hot end exploration, seeing what we can do there, and software. The software is definitely a limiting factor, at least now uh, that we're looking to modify it. Uh, if you're using it stock, there's no limitation. You just put in an SD card, put whatever you need on there, or hook it up to uh, you know a Raspberry Pi or your computer, and you're good to go with that. So definitely not a problem. Just I think it would uh, be much better with some more potent uh, software, and I think Clipper might be the solution. Let's take a brief look at these prints. Like I mentioned, this is all PTG, um, and this is a side panel for the uh, Ares machine by VoxLab. Just going to show it a little bit more love, see what I can do with that machine. But essentially, we're going to be putting in some, uh, not glass, but some plastic into here, some see-through plastic uh, to make uh, side panels.
panels from the machine and look at that nice sheen on this matte filament uh, came the first of all the design is really nice by the designer I'll have to have a link down in the description but take a look at the quality of the print let me see if I can get the light to reflect there first of all gotta love the texture of the PEI I think that's the number one uh, thing that you should do to any machine that has glass at the moment I think PEI spring sheets are just the absolute best uh, on the flip side look at that top layer just looking so so smooth the sides with the linear rails just absolutely outstanding really great quality just you know really enjoying uh, using this machine for sure and it's making it really really easy to recommend I think with this I'm gonna go ahead and now start to wrap up our uh, direct drive battle this I think this is gonna be the final machine in season two I have plenty now to grade and make a final um, episode for you guys so you can see uh, what's what's out there how all those machines are compared to themselves I think it's gonna be a fun uh, one to wrap up and then we'll maybe move into season three as I get more machines uh, into the shop uh, for testing but I think with that that is going to be all for me uh, thank you everybody that is a patreon subscriber uh, and a uh, channel member here on YouTube but thank you guys you guys help the channel absolutely directly and I really really appreciate that uh, thank you to all of our new followers we just recently hit 12,000 subs uh, that's really exciting you know thank you everybody for that and thank you everybody in our discord guys don't sleep on discord free community over there you can get help there you can show off your prints lots of people in there talking and just having a good time it is absolutely fun to just go in and scroll through seeing all the prints all the stuff that you guys are making it's just it's it's really inspiring actually and I do uh, you know jump in there time from time and try to help out as much as I can and it's really nice to see everyone in there helping each other out uh, whenever someone has a problem uh, that's the place you know you can go to uh, and get some help so I appreciate all you guys thank you to our mods uh, that are in there um, and just yeah just overall good spot to be in and just a big thank you to everyone uh, that's enjoying 3d print SOS at the moment all right with that Thank you, everybody, and as always, I'll see you all in the comments. Later.